All right, check, check. I think the mic's on. What do you think? Do you think the mic's on? Can you hear me? If you can't hear me saying this, then we have a problem. You need to let me know. Quit. I found your collar, buddy. You want it? I bet it would look pretty good on you. Come on, pal. Let's see what other collars I might find around. I think the rest of them are upstairs, though, in the rooms. Oh, buddy, your belly's starting to come back to a normal size, too. Oh, so good to see you feeling better. Okay. Uh, that's a little tight now. Look at that. You're getting a bigger collar. There we go. Just a little. I know, buddy. I know. Oh, I know. It's weird. I know you don't want it. I know you don't want it. Hang on. There we go. Oh, but you look so handsome. It'll make it a lot easier to tell you from your brother soon. It's going to be hard to tell you guys apart before long. I think this one actually likes coffee because I saw him the other day eating coffee grounds and with his head in the coffee cup and all that kind of stuff. It's with you, buddy. That isn't right. This green collar is not Lodge's collar. This is just a brand new green collar that they pulled out of the box. Way too big. Lodge's, Lodger's, whatever his name is. I guess I was saying that louder for the mic. I forgot I'm wearing it. Uh, let's see, what else do I have to do here? Can I sit right in front of your chair, Quiddy? What was I going to do? I was going to turn this box around so we can see all the art on the other sides that are beautiful. I don't know how well that looks, though. We're going to zoom in and stuff in a minute. What else have I got together here? Hi. Hi, Billy. Come on out here and sit with your bro, Bill. Right here. Try this. I guess I ought to check that you guys can hear me okay and that I'm not like yelling, shouting your ears out or something awful. Uh, what do I need before I sit down though? I guess I got everything here. Uh, except somebody's in my seat already. Hi. Hi, Billy. Billy, you want to sit in my lap, huh? You want to play this puppy ball as big as you are? Okay. What you thinking, pal? You're looking right at me. What is it you are thinking? Oh no, I'm 
Mr. Bill. Bill, will you ride Bill? Bill, will you let Bill ride you? Hang on. Oh, oh no, Mr. Bill's not going to stay on there. Yeah, he might sit on there for just long enough to take a picture, though, through the floor camera if you guys are watching. And you're going to get right in the way. Bill's just stunned. He has no idea what's happening around him ever, so he's not going to have any objection to that. There we go. Ride him, Bill. Oh, oh no, Mr. Bill. Okay, we tried. Pretty good. That's a good job, buddy. Sit right here in my lap for a minute, okay? There you go. How much ear damage have I caused this morning? Where are we? <laughs> All right, looks like everybody can hear me. Good. Uh, the witch hat scratcher, I see people, I saw Oasis saying, you're going to get it for your boys. It's fine. Um, it's cute. You should get it. That's great. I just want to tell you that I had to supply my own double-sided tape to keep the bottom in. Um, it just, it doesn't quite fit, and they didn't supply any way to, to put the bottom in. So, uh, if you just make it as delivered, and when you pick it up, <laughs> the cat's going to stay where it is. <laughs> if there's a cat in it. So... Otherwise, it's uh, otherwise it's easy. It's, uh, it goes together in like five seconds. Very simple. Not bad, and it's cute. Bill is so tiny. Um, there's a scale right over there. Let's get some weights this morning too. Uh, we're gonna get our first weight right now. You're gonna wait right here, buddy. There you go. What are we watching, Custard? It looks like you're looking at something out there. I have no idea how much this guy weighs. Oh, he's just going to sit there, I guess. Oh, uh, hey, look at that. We're four minutes into Mailbag. So, uh, hi, everybody. Welcome to Mailbag. Uh, it is Saturday. Today's going to be kind of a rambly Mailbag. Uh, we're starting late, too. Thank you so much for letting me start late. Um, also, uh, let me check the camera angles real quick and see if we should zoom in on the floor camera a little. I think we should. Sorry, I know it's going to make things a little tight as far as seeing the other kittens. Well, you got the other angles, though. Okay, I think that's as good as we're going to get, though. And let me make sure that Bill's still in the camera shot. And then... He is just barely perfect. Good enough. All right, that's as good as we're going to do. Hey, Teaspoon, somebody said I should weigh you, so let's just start right here. Sit right there for one sec. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Don't go anywhere yet. Hang on, just sit here for one sec. No touching, no touching, no touching, 97.6 ounces. Okay, buddy, move along. I don't know what that comes to in like any reasonable numbers now, uh, but I do need to put this in the chart. I'm sure somebody's probably doing this for me, but I'm just going to look anyway. Uh, let's see. I don't even know where he goes. 97.6. I'll let somebody else take care of it or try to remember for later. For these kids, though... Uh, let's just take a quick number for them. Hi, buddy. You weigh 100.8. You weigh more than a teaspoon, and you're from a, a younger class. A much younger class. 100.8. Bill, do you think you weigh 100.8? What's the over-under for you, buddy? 100? Okay. All right. I'm going over. Nope. Under. 15.7. Oh, you're down a little bit, but that's good, because you're kind of getting to be a good shape again. Let me feel your ribs one more time, buddy. Okay, you need some work, but I think they're starting to fill in. Oh, no, it's still pretty light, bud. Still, starting to even out a little, so 
That's good. All right, quid. Quid has gotten so much better. You can tell just by looking at his fur how much nicer he feels. 33.7. Good. Okay. Bill, do you have a big poop this morning or what's up, buddy? Do you need some more? Okay. I think you're going to have to hang out with me. We're going to have to make sure you're still having good poops. He does have good poops or has had good poops. He's been perfectly healthy. So I guess uh, I guess that's where we start with the news is that um, everybody has been pretty healthy. Uh, this guy, he's got that little snort that you hear and we've asked the vet about it and we're going to keep looking at it. But other than that, he seems like he's great. He's just weirdly small and bloated. Uh, and we've checked out everything. He's been to the vet for it a couple times. So the vet thinks he might just kind of be a runt, you know, um, or whatever. I don't know if that's the, uh, like, if that term's politically correct or not, or uh, I have no idea. Uh, I'm just going to go with it until somebody tells me otherwise. Um, but uh, yeah, he might just be kind of congenitally small. We'll see. Um, but he does seem like he's perfectly healthy and he's starting to, to kind of get to a normal shape. Bill, on the other hand, uh, Bill had really bad diarrhea. I'm uh, not Bill. Quid had really bad diarrhea for a while. And uh, fortunately, it seems like he is out of the woods now and uh, doing much better. He had his solid poops last night and um, he's obviously, you know, acting like he feels so much better. So, so it's just all good news all around. Um, that's the only real news. We still need to get all the older kids adopted, which we're working on. And, oh, that reminds me, oh man, it's been such a, a relief to have, um, so many people working on getting those videos uploaded and to see them going up all the time. And I just don't have to do anything, uh, about it. It's, it's, I just can't tell you what a gift that has been. So, uh, thank you to the people that are, are taking care of that. I, I, I couldn't. Okay. Uh, let's see here. I do want to stick to more or less an hour and we're already running late thanks to me. So let's dive right in and see what we got here. This is our pile of letters. Letters-ish, I guess. None of those are letter letters. I guess this is what we got though. All right, this first one has a bunch of fall decorations on it, including three pumpkin cats. And it says orange pumpkin cat sharing one brain cell. That's cute. And then we have a picture of uh, fl oh, Flat uh, Izzy, the Flat Izzy sticker. Flat Izzy in a leaf pile. It's very cute. And you've got it in a leaf pile, and you've got little leaves falling down. Such detail. And then the KA logo with a Halloween hat on. So there we have it. All the things I described. Uh, the leaves falling down on Flat Izzy. And our three little pumpkins sharing a brain cell. Oh, my goodness. And our Tommy going nuts over there. What's up, Welly? Tommy 2.0. That's strange. I have no idea what's going on right here. I've never seen this kind of envelope before, but it looks like it's supposed to be, it looks like it's supposed to look like a Brad there, or uh, whatever you call those things that are on folders. Yet it isn't. Okie dokie, look at this fun stuff. Oh, fantastic. The Orinda, Orinda, Orinda. I think it's Orinda. The Orinda News. Oh, very cool. The classic car show. Land yachts. I just saw, it's drizzling out. I went to the, uh, there's a lot of classic cars in the neighborhood. There's a diner uh, not too far away that always has them out there. So I was just going out to pick up all this mail. And on the way back, it's drizzling out. It is, it's definitely raining. I mean, it's not, it's not a light rain but it's not it's not a heavy rain but it's coming down like you get you're getting wet the windshield wipers are on like we're not joking about it and uh yeah a guy came by in a land yacht with the top down just cruising right by me like okay well i don't know you know whatever <laughs> i need a shower too i guess so that's fine all right Okay, to read on stream with a smiley face, and it says, Dear Mr. A and Dr. DJ and esteemed KA faculty and students, and hello, YouTubers. Hearing Mr. A tell the kittens no peeing or vomiting in the tissue pit last Saturday after mailbag reminded me of the signs that are sometimes posted around swimming pools, and it inspired me to create a similar one for the tissue pit. Oh, oh, that's cute. That's a tissue it. <laughs> That, I like it. That's so funny. Uh, I, I really like that. Okay. Um, 
Since we know that KA cats are receiving a comprehensive education in catting, I'm sure they'll be able to read it and hopefully follow the instructions. The postcard from Avalanche Falls. Whoa, that does not sound like a safe place to be. The Flume Gorge, New Hampshire. Hmm. Uh, I see Flat Izzy has also been there. He says uh, Flume Gorge is gorgeous. I see. Well done. Uh, okay. Let's see, uh, where were we? The postcard is from our recent trip to New Hampshire and Vermont, visiting Twin B at Dartmouth College Parents Weekend, and then taking some time for viewing the fall colors of the Northeast, because here in the San Francisco Bay Area, the only native plant that turns bright red in the fall is poison oak, LOL. It's got some frequent flyer miles from making the trip from New Hampshire to California before heading back east to Connecticut, but I'm sure it arrived in due time. And if you and Dr. DJ ever decide to venture up to northern New Hampshire, the Flume Gorge Trail at Franconia Notch State Park is, dare I say, gorge us. A pun so good you used it twice. I like that. I do that all the time, so I am not one to point fingers. Um, okay, especially on an unseasonably warm and humid early October day, where the shade and the cool breeze coming off the water combined with the fall colors, bubbling cascades and waterfall, and fascinating geology made for a lovely visit. I posted some pictures in the KA Discord travel channel. The Mount Pemijawasset Summit also has lovely views, but the supposedly 1.5 mile hike to the summit feels a lot longer because the trail's mostly uphill, oh really, to the summit, uh, and a bit rugged with lots of rocks and tree roots on the path. I've also enclosed our local paper. The article in the lower right corner of page one raises the question, Woodst thou still declare Shakespeare overrated uh, if a Midsummer Night's Dream was set in both an after-school drama club with a burnt-out drama teacher and in a Dungeons and Dragons world. Uh, hugs and spoogles to all the KA faculty, mom, cats, and students, purrs and meows, Lily Cat's mom, Lily Cat's dad, Twin A, Twin B, Izzy, and Flat Izzy, and Angel Cat Lily. Uh, thank you so much for the wonderful letter. I love the tissue pit sign. I'm going to have to figure out a way to attach it to the fabric tissue pit. Um, I mean, I can use some tape. It'll probably come off pretty quickly, though, so I guess it'll work. Oh, you know what? I think I have adhesive Velcro. It might even stick right to the pit if I just put some on the back of this. Um, okay, let's see. This is a uh, young filmmaker's premiere of a Midsummer Night's D&D. &D. I see. So they've sort of mashed things up. Uh, I would check that out, actually. Yeah, why not? I like, um, you know, a lot of things that people do with the Shakespeare stories. There's nothing wrong with that. All right. Uh, that's one of the reasons that it's overrated, I think, is that it's, it can be done so much better, uh, you know? And sure, he invented it. Des oh, see, it deserves some credit for that. Absolutely deserves all the credit for it. He's invented so much of the English language, for sure. Yeah, no, I'm not saying that. Uh, look, this has got uh, a little, see, there's a little brad on it. This is actually metal. And the other one is just like a cutout. There's a, a window to a piece of silver that is the same kind of shape. And I don't know if that's a deliberate thing or an accident. It's got to be a deliberate thing, though. And it's just a weird sort of like, oh, look, we're going to look like we have a brad, like a fancy envelope does, a piece of metal. <laughs> but we don't. The world's a weird place, isn't it? We humans get up to some strange stuff. All right, uh, what do we got here? Uh, this is the Riverside Booster. Oh, oh, this is from my mother. Uh, of course it is. Wow, is this uh, Aunt Chris? Oh, I just was, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I was gonna say this looks like the pond uh, at your uh, park. And uh, sure enough, I see the postscript. Aunt Chris painted this picture of our pond. How cool is that? Uh, that's, that's my Aunt Chris, who I was named after. My mom's sister, of course. All right. Uh, let's see. It says, hi, Chris, Deepa, and all your KA family. The big news at my house is I'm fostering a little three or four month old Aussie cat tabby that was born at Friends of Feline's TNR clinic to a mother that was too uh, near term to spay. But they accepted her in order to give her a place to deliver her kittens and ensure all were neutered before going to the Kansas Humane Society. Well, long story short, the mother had ringworm and one by one the kittens got it too. This went on for almost nine weeks and none of the volunteers held the kittens. Aww. 
Uh, but we all suited up and cleaned their cages twice a day, emptied the litter boxes, refreshed their food, and about 30% of the resident cats oh, got ringworm too. Wow, yeah, that's a tough one because ringworm is so contagious. And I guess it must happen a lot down there uh, in that area. I've never seen it, but I think it's one of those things that you get a lot more down south just because of the weather and the, the environment, you know. Um, you have a warmer season. There's a lot more cats getting together. You know, you have these big... Uh, so. Uh, I know that my mom has had it actually happen um, to kittens that she's been fostering at her house, and she's gotten it too, and it takes forever because it keeps, you know, circulating. Like, you can get it and give it right back to somebody who just got rid of it. Uh, so that's a tough one. Um, let's see. Uh, had to get a treatment course. Okay, trying to be so careful. I know that disposable gloves and gowns and the antifungal spray. Everything was washed down with all the time. They finally got cured. Aw. Um, let's see. Oh, they were too hissy to be put up for adoption, so I took the worst one home to socialize, and I used so much of your tips and tricks. First and foremost, I put her in the two-tier cage like yours at the Academy and covered it to allow her to feel safe in a small space. Within two days, she started eating and drinking, and with five days, she was meowing at me to open up the top and pet her. So I put a barrier up in the kitchen and made sure there was nothing for her to hide under and let her out. I played with a wand toy with her, which she enjoyed, but was very skittish if I moved my legs or feet. So it was hard getting her back in her cage, but she didn't seem to know how to find the way in. I caught her and got her in, and within two days, she would follow the wand toy in. I still can't pick her up, but we've just finished over our, our second week together, and I'm putting my hand under her chest when I pet her in her cage, uh, and I lift up a little, which she tolerates. She's actually very lovable and cries for me to come over and pet her. She never... Uh, she never wants out of... Oh, she never was out of her cage at the Friends of Felines. Aww. But we all did our best we could... Not being a rescue, uh, but strictly a spay and neuter clinic. I see. So you guys, uh, friends of felines normally just do the spays and neuters, but th this pregnant kind of threw them off, uh, I guess. So uh, we have cages for cats that come in to be spayed, but we're not set up for fostering or sheltering. Right, exactly. So the ringworm was the problem. Oh, I have to admit, I didn't want to handle any cats with ringworm, I bet, because you've been through that, like I said. Uh, and change my gloves every time because a single hair transferred could have a spore on it. Yes, I'm paranoid. Anyway, Leah is coming along, and what fun it is to have a little kitten in the house again. Buddy and Sweetie are five years old already. I can hardly believe it. And Wally will be two next April. Wally has his own aquarium now with uh, speedy little zebra danios zipping around, and he seems very proud to sit next to the tank and observe them. He purrs so loud. If you have any tips for me to get Leah used, Leah being used to being picked up, I'm all ears. LOL, love you all, Mom. Uh, P.S. Aunt Chris painted this picture of our pond. All right, so there's the picture of the pond. What? A, that's so great, and I think that's the the kitten that you just recently sent me a photo of too. That is like you say, it looks like a Bengal crossed with a tabby. It's got the sort of round spots that you expect from a Bengal, and then it's kind of the mackerel stripes too. Beautiful little kitty, and I think you said that you think it's got uh, a CH as well. And now I understand what you were saying, where you weren't quite sure if it had CH because you haven't been able to see it running around enough yet, and it makes sense. Um, it's so great that you're socializing it that way, and that I know it takes a lot of extra effort. But what I really like that you had said here, though, is about how you gave it a safe place in the tiny cage first and made sure that it was getting used to it and you covered it with a blanket, which I remember we've done a long time ago for, for kittens that needed that. Um, and uh, what I really like then is when you're ready to let it out, you first prepared the room that you're going to let it out into, right? You, 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 took the, you decided the kitchen is the one that I can do and you went through the kitchen, you made sure there was nothing that it could hide under that you couldn't get to. Which is a really important lesson, especially, you know, I, um, obviously you're older than I am, Mom. <laughs> but, uh, but as I'm getting older, I discover more and more um, how uh, it, it helps to plan a little bit how you're going to get at the cats if they decide that they don't want you to get to them. Um, you know, if they're going to hide under a bed or something, it, it's, a, it's a different kind of prospect trying to get a cat out from under a bed now than it was when I was a younger guy. 
you know, and it's not too bad yet. I, I still can just hop right under there if I have to, but I don't want to. So taking that little bit of extra time to prepare the room and know, all right, if the cat freaks out, where's it going to go? And am I going to be able to get to it uh, and have a plan in advance is, is very smart. So I'm glad that's working out for you. What a little sweetheart that is. You also sent me the Riverside Community newspaper, the Riverside Booster. So sweet. Oh, lots of it. Okay. Very cool. Oh, that's a lot for me to catch up on. I can't wait. That's so cute. My mom lives in the cutest little ne- neighborhood in Wichita, Kansas, and uh, it is uh, it is a neighborhood still. It's very adorable. So they've got their own little neighborhood uh, newspaper. Uh, I feel like there was something else in there I wanted to respond to. Um, let's see. The ringworm, the kitten... Well, I know, I know it's going to be fantastic. Oh, I was going to say about Serenity, because uh, what we're going through with Serenity turns out to be very simple. Of course, Serenity is, is much, much easier, because she is a, a wonderful cat that loves people very much. Uh, but it's a similar process that I'm going through on a, on a slightly different level. Where And this is important, so I'm, I hope you guys can excuse me for doing a little ramble. Um, but uh, Serenity... Um, You've seen her running around the house. She loves to to play with the kittens. She gets very hyper. But it turns out, I think that she's been carrying an awful lot of stress from having all the other cats around as well. And she really wants to be alone and have her own private space. And I think, honestly, I think my recommendation at this point would be for her to even be adopted alone. Um, But if she's not going to be adopted alone, whoever adopts her should at least plan on on letting her have her own space that she might just want to live in all the time. You know, you remember when Smokey was in Illinois... She was very stressed out by all the other cats that were around in Illinois and wasn't really happy until she had her own office uh, to live in there. Uh, and then somehow, when we moved here, everybody got shaken up and she ended up really, you know, coming out, which is great. Um, but, uh, you know, it is, it's, it is what it is. So Serenity turns out that she, uh, I moved into what was Brooke's room, the, the third annex, the Brooke's room, whatever you call it, the extra spare room upstairs. I, I cleaned it out especially for her. Really, uh, you know, uh, made it a, a wonderful little room and put her in there. Uh, and I've been having a problem with her where it's been really difficult to sort of catch her or to handle her. She's like extra, extra hand shy. Uh, raindrops decide you don't need to see me from the floor camera. Uh, she's super extra hand shy and she can, she can even sort of lash out a little bit if you're not respecting her. Um, so I've been a little bit of hand shy too, where I'll start going at her and she'll kind of give me a look where I'm, and I'm, I'll be afraid and I don't want to show her that, you know, so I try to sort of put on like, okay, I'm not, I'm not afraid and she's not going to hurt me. I've had mom cats that are going to hurt me and I know the difference, but I still, you know, literally once bitten, twice shy over here. Um, so I know she's not going to bite me though. And I know when she does swap me, she pulls her punches. So that's not the point. Uh, the point was that she has been difficult for me to deal with, and, and she just, uh, it, it's been a little a little rough. You've seen it around, but she hasn't been the priority here with everything else we've had going on. Finally got her room, put her in there. She is transformed now that she's got her own room. First off, she doesn't want to come out. I keep opening the door and asking her if she wants to come out, and she just looks at me like, no, you come in here. Uh, so that's good. I think I did something that she really appreciates. Uh, but then secondly, she, I go in, she just comes up, she rubs on my ankle, she wants to be petted, uh, more than anything, like I'll put her food down and she'll ignore the food in favor of hanging out with me. And if I sit down in there, she comes over, she's still hand shy. I still have to work with all that same, you know, kind of, kind of issues. And like you, I, I, like my mom, I mean, I, I take it slow, um, and carefully, but she's already, I can stand up over her and she'll flinch, but she doesn't run away, you know? completely different um and i can pet her and and she might flinch a little bit but then she's like oh this is great you know so i just have to keep pushing on that and it, it, she's so close to already being over it that it, it won't take much for her but i do think that being around other cats just increases her stress level over time to the point where she gets a little bit neurotic like she was and if we just put her in her own room it just disappears and she turns out to just be a little bit shy and wonderful and so sweet so uh, I've got to put a camera in there so we can all see that, but until then, you'll just have to take my word for it that she is doing really, she's thriving uh, now that she's got her own space away from the other kittens. So, all right. Thanks for giving me a chance to talk about all that. I know uh, we're probably going to end up doing mailbag tomorrow also, but that's fine with me. I hope it's fine with all of you.
Oh, this is so cute. Look at these. Uh, this is cute. We've got a Mr. A, you're a fine apple. That's cute, a fine apple. And we've got a little pineapple sticker. And we've got a little rainbow unicorn. Okay. And we've got uh, some real chart paper here, which is super. Oh, and printed on. Hello, Mr. A, Dr. DJ, and all my fellow academicians. I think I got that. I tried. Just a quick note to say hello and to wish everyone a happy autumn. We're having some cooler weather here in Asheville, and my cats and I are enjoying some wonderful evenings on our porch. I've enclosed a card for the current students and faculty to enjoy in a small donation to help with adjunct professor Teaspoon's upcoming surgery. I know all of us are watching him carefully and sending nothing but good thoughts his way. Give my favorite Professor Loganberry some extra spoogles from me, and as always, pet kittens and ramble on. April in Asheville, a.k.a. Ginger Tuffy Cat. All right, so this must be a pop-up card. That's why it's so thick. Are you a pop-up kitten, thick buddy? All right. It is. It says, note 2023, happy Halloween, April in Asheville, a.k.a. Ginger Tuffy Cat. And we got some stickers here. Oh, and uh, like you said, something to help out with that surgery. Where did I put the box? All right, I'm going to tuck that right in here. Thank you very much for that. Okay. Um, so when it comes to the surgery, we've scheduled, you know, like his first appointment in that. And then I think the surgery itself is going to be a second thing that we have to schedule after the first thing. Uh, but we are um, on the right track. And I think that is the first week of November. And, uh, you know, I keep calling the, the vet and bothering him about it, the cardiologist. So... Uh, this is so cute. It's a bunch of little Halloween dogs, it looks like, mostly. So these kittens are going to have a lot of fun tearing that one up. And they're all in various costumes in front of a haunted house. It is adorable. I think they're going to have fun with that. So thank you very much, Ginger Tuffy Cat. All right, let's put all my reading materials together over here. This has to go in this pile, not that pile. All right, got that straight. Custard is in that basket. Oh, how am I going to show you guys this? I at least have to take a picture. I can do that without breaking anything because this is so silly. He completely fills this basket. <laughs> I just had the, the most vivid memory of something I've told you guys about before. My mom's collection of uh, little tiny sculpted dogs that are in thimbles, actual thimbles, so the little tiny sculptures. And the way that they fill up these thimbles is just like, this is, this is him. He could be that sculpture, a dog in a thimble. Uh, all right. Let's get started here, I think. Uh, yeah, we're going to get started. Good. Oh, no, I need to take another picture. There's so much cuteness happening here. Oh, that is adorable. When did that start? Okay, I'm going to post these on the Discord so you guys know what I'm talking about. Lodge and Teaspoon are back there snuggling in that pumpkin bed. Like, really snuggling. Is that... I don't know if you guys will be able to see all that. All right, let's check that camera. Let's post this on Discord. Let's open some boxes. Well, we're getting closer, aren't we? That's about as good as I can get it. Okay, um, <laughs> nice basket you got there, buddy. Yeah. All right. Oh, starting on the card. Good. Somebody's got to do it. Oh, no, Mr. Bill. Okay. This box has no distinguishing features. <laughs> okay. Inside, we have Halloween. Halloween is inside this box, all of it. Packed uh, right in there. Where do I put these boxes? There's so much cuteness happening on every side. The only open spot is right here next to the spider. Okay. Kitten Academy and Family. All right. It's got a Mickey Mouse ears on it for some reason, but it's also got the Papyrus logo, so I guess 
these pop-up people have made a deal with Disney. It's so pretty, too. They had to go extra on the, the card fronts. Usually are just a little drawing of whatever's inside, but this is extra. And look, there's a little black cat with a Mickey Mouse ghost and a pumpkin. It says, Happy Halloween. Oh, it's not pop-up. It's papyrus. They're making non-pop-ups. That's why it's so fancy on the outside. It says, Scare up some big fun this Halloween. Love, Karen. Thank you so much. And inside it says... Dear Mr. A and Co, how are you? We're wind I'm fine, by the way. Thank you for asking. We're winding down from another hurricane season. Came close, but it missed us and went to the East Coast. Did you guys feel it? It was supposed to hit the East Coast. And Canada. Well, I don't know. We didn't feel anything like a hurricane, but uh, it has been rainy uh, since 2019 when I moved here, more or less. Halloween is near. Uh, by now, you should have received part one of the Halloween fun things. One kitty squishmallow trick-or-treat basket. It is so cute. I had to cut the handle because Ari immediately went and got his head stuck in it. But it's, it's right back there behind the pumpkin, actually. It's very cute in this room. And I, I've got to figure out something I can put in it to make it uh, more fun for the kittens, even. Hmm. Uh, I'll come up with something. I could get one of the cheap water bottles that we haven't put in there, so at least it makes like crinkly noises if they bounce it around, but they're not dogs and it's a little big. I'll think of something. Hi, buddy. Oh, what's going on? Did I hear a growl in the pumpkin? Ledger? Oh, no, it's Till. Till, who are you stalking? No stalking. I see you. No stalking. Just be friends, okay? Uh, where were we? Okay, Halloween is near. By now you should have received... Okay, we got that. Um, our kitty squishmallow basket. I thought it was so cute. I bought one for me, too. My office mates love them, and I'm slowly getting into it, too. They're all the rage with the kiddos. I gave a bunch to my niece. Her friends also have them, too. Are there any chocolate slash treats that you love to eat during Halloween? Do you put out any candy for the kiddos or decorate outside? What a great question, um, because I do always put out candy for the kids. I don't usually actively participate though in our old place in illinois um no kids really ever came to trick-or-treat we we kind of bought candy the first few years and then we even stopped doing that as i recall i just we just didn't do it because nobody ever came so our first year here uh, i brought candy and the kids came by which was nice um and i kind of met the neighbors a little bit and it was okay uh it was cute uh, and then every year after, I've bought candy, and then by the time Halloween starts, I'm like, I'm doing something else. I'm just going to put everything out there on a table with a night note that says, help yourself, and that's what we do. So, and my kids do come. The candy's always gone, you know. <laughs> it's cute, so whatever. I always wish I could do more, uh, like that I had the, the bandwidth to do more. It'd be fun to be one of those houses that, like, puts on a big Halloween thing for everybody, but nah. Um favorite candies oh man i don't know i've got so many i just i love stuff i'm a i've got a big sweet tooth probably peanut butter cups i would say uh just classic reese's peanut butter cups and uh and i can't have them ever because i'll eat them and those things are the worst for you i mean really the worst and i can eat so many of them Ugh, it's not it's not good so yeah that's why i never have them around uh let's see here Oh, <laughs> um, been crazy busy at work. Our program room flooded, so we can't do any programs until further notice, and there's a whole lot more things involved. Basically a fun waiting game. I'm trying to do a better job of self-care. Do you find you have to do this too? I know you have your work cut out for you. It must be nice to get a little break. I know there's a new game called Starfield. My brother-in-law and hubby are playing it like mad. I don't, mo don't know much about it, but it looks pretty good since they're playing it a lot. Uh, me too. It's it's very fun. It's exactly what I expected it to be, so I'm having fun with it. Uh, Self-care, yeah. Uh, I had, um, you know, I, I said right before mailbag, and I'll just take the opportunity to say it again. Um, the, the absolute best thing for my mental health recently has been finally opening things up for people to help out with the videos and the uploads and more of the social media and it's we're going slow i don't want to rush into it but even what we've done so far has just been such a relief uh, i should have done it years ago 
So, uh, is DJ Dunn ready to be a full-fledged doctor? My cousin is now a legit doctor. She did all of her practical side internship, et cetera, and got a new job in another state. So they are super happy there. Does DJ know what she wants to specialize in? That must be very exciting and scary at the same time. It's a big decision. It is, and it's not even something you're ever done with. But yes, she's been specializing in ICU, uh, the intensive care unit, and they combine that with pulmonary, uh, you know, lung uh, doctor stuff. So that's what she's specializing in, and she's uh, in her second to last year now of that specialization. So um, two, she just basically started the second to last year. So about two years from now is when she will finally be free to, um, uh, well, I, I mean, put it bluntly, to make doctor's salaries. You do not get that when you are an intern or a fellow. Uh, and, uh, you know, everybody's feeling the economy these days. So a couple more years is all we got to go. And then uh, hopefully smooth sailing. Um I see there is a whole new crew of kittens and mama cats. I like Tilly. Her white paws are so pretty. They are. She's so pretty and so sweet and so noisy. She talks incessantly. How does DJ come up with such fun and create family names for them? Is there a max of how many cats and kittens you could take at a time without being overwhelmed? Uh, That's also a good question. So many nice things for me to respond to. I like having mailbag as a QA, and a and I hope nobody minds the fact that I'm taking so much time uh, to, to sort of respond to things that, that you know, we're going to have a couple days of mailbag. It's fine with me. I hope it's good with everybody else because I like it. And um, I don't know how DJ does her names. It's her own magic. So you'll have to ask her that one. But the max, I wanted to say, um, I think our maximum is in t- mid-20s, 25-ish kittens and cats total. But it really depends on the situation how many cats and kittens you can have. If nobody's sick, you can have a lot of cats and kittens, but then if they start getting sick and you've got a lot of cats and kittens, you are in over your head real fast. So it's easy to get overcommitted too. Um, And I feel like I was just looking at these kittens this morning and thinking the younger kittens are getting big enough now where it's about time that we would bring in a new mom cat. Um, but the older kittens are older and, and demand so much. They need, they're at this age now where they need a lot of attention from people, uh, more than anything. You know, they're getting to that adolescent stage where it's even more important to them and to you, but to them too, they recognize the need for that human affection now and will demand it. Um, so meeting those demands for the five, uh, you know, older kittens that we have in five, three, uh, three, four, five, I'm counting serenity. And yeah, so five, I guess, till that, that does, that adds up. Um, it's difficult. It, it, it is difficult. It takes all of the day just to kind of hang out with them. Um, so that, that, that's, it's tricky, I guess, is my point. Not, don't get me wrong, I love it. There is no more uh, fun way to spend an entire day than trying to figure out how to parcel out your time among all the various kittens that need to be snuggled. I mean, I got, I got problems. <laughs> you do not want these problems. <laughs> all right, uh, let's see. I put a note on the items from the first part. Yes, you did send a box too. We should get to that. So you sent tissues for the tissue pit in... Uh, what we are going to call crunchy roll orange, um, squish mallow. Oh, uh, was that from the previous box that we got already? I guess. Uh, so thank you for that from for human use. I see. Kitten foods, kittens house as you see fit. Okay, good. Now for the box, tissue paper for everyone, cat toys and costumes. Ooh. All right, our costumes. Look at that. We've got this beautiful magician's uh, robe kind of a thing, I say, because it's decorated with shiny stars and moons. It does look like something a magician would wear. Um, oh, I hope you guys have a spooky and perfect Halloween. Enjoy your goodies, love, Karen. All right, Karen, thank you very much. Okay, uh, we have some sort of a spooky, it looks to me like a, oh, it's a quill and a book to write in that says spooky. Teaspoon is really giving it the ledger in there now. All right, buddy. I think you've established your dominance. Um, okay. There we go. Here, have another piece of tissue right here, Till. Okay. Hey. Hey, buddy. I think you already won, Teaspoon. Okay. Good job, buddy. You already won. 
You said you won. That's good. Teaspoon, I think, is starting to get those uh, adolescent urges, too. So it's good that, that we've got his uh, surgery scheduled. I should let you guys know, though, in case you do see him doing something that looks like um, something that an adult cat might do, uh, that first off, I have checked, he still seems like he's incapable of actually uh, doing anything, which is why we've put off the surgery and why he's not already fixed, because he's crypt orchid, is what they call it. Um, and, you know, secondly, we are, we're getting to it as fast as we possibly can, believe me. Uh, and everybody here is fixed, and it's just, you know, a natural thing. Ari uh, is known for doing this with mom cats, and we, we try to make sure that if it happens, it happens off camera. But, uh, you know, it's a thing that comes up once in a while. So, okie dokie. Uh, where was I, though? We were going through this wonderful box of stuff. This is a cute little dental fish. Thing. It's got weird whiskers on it, so it's not really just a fish either. Maybe it looks like catfish to me. It says feline clean peppermint scented. That's an odd choice for something a cat's supposed to chew on. Uh, but then, you know, cat mint, uh, cat nip is technically a mint, so maybe they do like peppermint. I don't know. I've never, never occurred to me to try. Look at this. This is a little tiny. DJ has to see this. She is going to flip when she sees this little tiny kitten sized Halloween basket. And it's full of little tiny kitten Halloween toys. We got a little mouse, and there's a couple of kitten uh, uh, balls to play with in there. We've got uh, some sort of weird matchstick shaped thing, and a candy corn, and then a little tiny wand with a bell and two bats on it. It's all wrapped up there, so that it's all packaged together too, so nothing's going to fall out yet. That is adorable, and I am not going to unpackage that until after DJ sees it um, because it is the cutest thing. It would really, this would also be great for that photo shoot, wouldn't it? I really want to do that, and that's another thing about how people have been helping out so far. Um, I know uh, Jamestown on the chat has uh, started to put together that blog post I promised like a week ago. Thank you, Jamestown. I, uh, you know, it's, I should have done it myself, and... I put it off for so long, uh, now I just have to review it and post it. So that's the level of work that I am at now. Um, I was going somewhere else with that, though. Oh, the fact that I feel like I actually could do a Halloween photo shoot um, just because I know now I can set it up and do the photos and put them into the uploading system, and uh, you know, uh, some wonderful person will... Uh, take care of the hard work parts too. Well, there's some of, I mean, it's, photo shoots aren't necessarily the easiest thing, but uh, anyway, uh, neither here nor there. So here we got some extra fancy feast. We have Sheba, wonderful treats. Oh, this is lots and oh, lots and lots of treats. Uh, we have the delectable stew. Oh, that's a great one too for um, little kittens that need some extra hydration and fun foods. Here we have the Count, uh, or I guess Count Dracula, probably, um, as a cat kicker. There we go. We have Greenies, one of the great little dry treats for our kitties, another tissue. And at the bottom, oh, another Delectables, uh, the Bisque. Hey, 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 take it easy now. I don't know if you're trying. Uh, these two have the, the biggest, they've got some history going between them now, so they do tend to have a little bit of an issue once in a while. But I'm trying to manage it by not letting them go too far at it and still spend time around each other and hopefully keep it on the side of them being uh, friends rather than let it turn into a Custard versus Logan situation. So... It just means I have to keep an eye out a little and try not to let it accidentally go too far too often. Uh, so let's see. These Halloween toys should probably stay out, though. This one can be put out right here. There we go. Nice Halloween colors. Do -do 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 -do. Uh, let's see. The card can go over here. The tissue paper is going to end up downstairs. Our costumes are going to end up upstairs. So that's got to go somewhere else with... Uh, we actually don't have anything going upstairs yet. Okay. All right. We're not packing up yet. Let's keep going. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. Well, this is addressed to Teaspoon, and it's been through customs. It is not only addressed to Teaspoon, it's addressed to Mr. T.C. Jansen. So, 
Let's see what teaspoon is getting. Please cut here gently. All right, well, this knife cuts so gently, it, it basically tears. Oh, okay. Knife guards. Oh, goodness, wow. We got out the entire royal guard here. And thank goodness I pulled that out to show you because the note was tucked in between those and I would have missed it. Oh, no, uh, this is not his note, actually. This is another grocery list note. How about that? Aww. Uh, that's cute. You, you accidentally included some, uh, some notes of your own here, which I'm not going to read, but it does say... 3rd June 2023, best mom cat ever, Mr. A. Among other notes that are clearly not for the stream, so that's interesting, isn't it? Very cute. Okay, but let's keep digging here because here we go. Hello, Teaspoon. We saw this and thought of you. Hope you like it. Also, a bow tie. Oh, for Christmas, DJ will die if she sees him wearing a bow tie. Uh, lots of love, Weirdo and Kevin. Purrs and meows. Weirdo and Kevin, thank you so much. Okie dokie. Well, is that the bow tie? I'm, I have to put it on him. I think he'll be okay. I, has he I never worn a collar? Has he? I'm not sure. Uh, I have to put it on him anyway, and he'll have to get used to it, because when DJ wakes up, uh, she's sleeping right now, because she's on night shift. Actually, like right there, um, somewhere. Okay. Uh, anyway, this bag will be great for discarding all of our stuff into. Weirdo and Kevin and uh, Charlie. That's Charlie, right? I think. Yes. Tell me I'm not wrong. Um, let's see what we have here. I'm trying to be very careful. This collar is adorable. I hope he can wear it. I might have to. I might have to modify it first. I, it's big, um, you know. And uh, I've, I've, I've talked before about how tiny little kitten necks are. And even though he is big, uh, you know, relative to Kitten Academy um, attendees, um, he's not that big. So we'll see how small this thing can go. Let's take the bow off of it completely and make it as small as it can be. See if that is going to. That's pretty big. That's a mighty big collar there, pal. Huh? Actually, I don't know though. He does have that whoops bulldog neck, so it could fit. We'll try it out. Oop, as soon as he's, oh, he, he sees me looking and he's like, no, no, I'm sleeping. Act like you're sleeping. Dad's looking. <laughs> okay, well. Uh, let's see. I'm really excited to see what this blanket is. I only have so many hands, though, so one second here. Why don't one of you open this blanket while I'm futzing with the collar, huh? Okay. I'm going to put that right here in my pocket until I get within arm's grab of teaspoon. Okay, let's see. I see something teaspoon colored, so I can see why it reminded you of him. Oh, wow. This could be a photo of him. That's great. Uh, there we go. Look at that. Oh, it's so cute. Little sleepy orange kitten and his little white face. Well, I'm going to have to like get some uh, fabric dye though and like put some food on there, right? Uh, <laughs> nah, he doesn't do that anymore. This is so cute. Wow, that does look just like him. What a perfect, perfect teaspoon blanket. Uh, he's picked out that pumpkin as his place to be for now. I think that the pumpkin, the orange pumpkin being in his bed now is really um, what I said before about how cats tend to like things that are their color, you know. He is all about that orange bed, and it fits him, too. That Maybe that's something that should go home with him. It's nice, though. Excuse me. It's that, uh, it's that Amercat brand, and the, the, the floofy stuff that they make is, like, super extra plush, so it actually stands up, uh, unlike a lot of these things that just collapse, you know. Um, that's, uh, yeah, it's a nice one. I, I, I'll still send it home with him if he still likes it by the time he goes home. How are we doing for time here? Okay. Oh, do I want an exit battery saver? No, that's fine. Um, 
All right, we have time for some more still, so let's keep rolling. I'm going to put this in the stuff going downstairs. That's how we're going to manage that. Okay, and this is still going up. And this is still going uh, somewhere. Okay, good. I think this blanket for him is going to have to go in his endowments. It's too much. Okay. This has to go here. Good. All right, Custard. I am excited to see what is in this box with all the beautiful drawings on it, but... I see you're telling us to save it because you need it to sit on until tomorrow. This looks like a cat with like a hot dog cart uh, with pumpkins and stuff. I don't know if he's selling hot dogs, but it's that kind of, you know, like the bicycle with the like the freezer on it, maybe ice cream or something. Hmm. Such cool little pictures and drawings and stickers. Uh, and uh, what do you call it when you, um, when you glue a bunch of pictures onto like a table? Uh, um, and then cover it with like a shellac. Uh, uh, oh my goodness, there's a word for this thing that is... Uh, the only word that keeps coming to my head is the wrong word. <laughs> Come on now. Um, it doesn't matter, but it's actually going to bother me for no reason. Okay, that's fine. Here we have a box that... Uh, oh, I was going to say, all right, Kitten Academy mailbag. Well, that's us. Good. It's a... It's a... It's plas. It's... Fish? It's wind up plastic. Oh. Hmm. What a cool idea. Huh. Are they are they wind up? They are wind up. Okay, well that's what we got. What we have here is a appears to be oh, I already broke it. Okay, a set of three uh, wind up plastic fish that I'm guessing, once you wind them up, will kind of swim along the floor. Um, their spines are very delicate, though, so that they wiggle, and it looks like they come apart without very much provocation. Oh, I see, though. Those spines aren't actually there to hold it. There's a piece of plastic that holds it, so that even though the, the little piece of sprue broke, yes, sprue, look at that. There's some words I can't think of at all, and then I have a word in my head like sprue, which is that little plastic frame that holds together, you know, like when you buy a plastic model and you got to take all the pieces apart and there's that, that stuff that holds it together. It's like the extra bits of plastic when they manufacture something that you just take it off and throw away. Uh, yeah. Okay, he's not going to run on this, uh, this floor at all. But I think you get the idea. Th this is just wiggling because it's loose you know there's no motor here so it's just a little little wheels i bet it would go great on the hardwood floor though these are so cool the the little fact that it's got this wiggly tail makes it a great cat toy and uh i think they're gonna like those i'm gonna put these in here to be endowments but that one uh, as soon as i get up we will try it on the hardwood floor but i think we can go another package since that one was so easy and had hey no notes so all right uh, let's see. Custard still doesn't want us to open the fun one, though. All right, I was looking at this. I don't know why this was uh, sent here specifically, but it is something that we uh, have always needed. And look at this. It's from LFS, the same person who sent us all of the waterproof blankets in the past, has sent us what says right on the box is another LFS waterproof blanket. Uh, thank you so much. These things are lifesavers um, because we use them constantly. This is beautiful. This is the same as the... Um, sorry, I was doing that right on the microphone, wasn't I? This is the same as that gray one with the, the sort of feathery pattern on it uh, that I'm sure you guys have all seen that is a waterproof blanket, even though it doesn't look like it. Uh, this is looks like, I think, the same manufacturer as that one, right? I don't know, actually, because it's different in some regards. Uh, let's see. This says non-slip pet blanket, which is cool. I like that. My favorite ones so far are the ones that are non-slip. Um, that gray one I've talked about, though, is not non-slip, which is how I know this one's at least a little different. Here we go. Uh, so you can see this one's a lovely, I want to say gray, but it, it also looks slightly green to me. And I don't know if it's just the light in here or my eyes or if it's perfectly gray. 
Does it say over there what color it thinks it is? It does not. Okay, well, I'm going to I'm going to call it gray, even though I really want to call it green. Um, and as you can see on the back, it does have those little rubber pips uh, that, that make it a non-slip. And it is clearly a waterproof blanket, and it's so soft. This brand does this thing where they put the really soft stuff here, and then under it, you can feel underneath it, there's like a heavy rubber layer. Like, this is a heavy blanket, and you can feel it's multi-layered. And it's, you know, you can tell there's something weird going on here. Like, you wouldn't mistake it for an ordinary blanket. But, uh, of all the waterproof blankets that I've seen, it is extremely nice and unoffensive. Uh, we've seen some that are just like, like sleeping with a plastic sheet, like you don't want to do it. Like it's not, or, or I say sleeping with because uh, in recent times, one of the, the recurring problems that we have solved with the waterproof blankets, hey, are uh, little kittens that we want to have in the spa that haven't yet learned necessarily to not make messes in the bed. Uh, on the bed, or um, we went for a long time with, uh, um, was it was it Teaspoon himself that had to live in the bedroom for a long time and uh, uh, was also making messes and had to learn how to use the litter box in the bedroom? Or I, might th I know these kids were for a while too, this family was. So the point being that we've been through this recently, it seems like just a, it's been going over and over and over where we've got a waterproof blanket, our own bed, uh, but then we also have to do it on the beanbag chairs because that's where uh, Logan tends to go, or at least they just, or even if it's not Logan, they're common targets. And uh, if you don't do that, it soaks into the whatever the filling of the beanbag chair is, and then that's garbage. You just you you never will get it out of the filling. Um, so that is a goner once it gets that far, which is why the waterproof blanket is so important. So these are fantastic, and there's. Uh, never too many waterproof blankets here, and as far as they go, this is a very good one that's going to look fantastic on our beanbag chairs. Uh, I opened it up. I think it's beanbag chair sized uh, looking at it. So, uh, yeah, DJ just bought a waterproof blanket herself that she really liked the look of, and then she got it and put it on the bed because we've been having this problem, and she hated it. She's like, this thing is too, it's like heavy and crinkly and awful. Uh, but it turned out to be perfect for protecting my new chair, which was good because it got peed on in like the first week. Uh, so, you know, um, one of the things about cat ownership is I think most people, uh, the average cat ownership experience does not include cats peeing on everything. I think uh, in general, cats are great at using the litter boxes. And if they start peeing on things, it's an indicator that there's some sort of an issue. Um, but one of the ways that you can get cats to pee on things if you want to is to cause a little bit of stress. And I, it is true that having this many cats around can cause a little bit of stress and we do whatever we can to minimize it. But when you've got this going on, you just, you know that you're going to get it once in a while. So it's good that we can come prepared and, uh, deal with it instead of, uh, having to throw out yet another beanbag chair, uh, or chair in general. So, uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, or just getting peed on <laughs> while you're trying to sleep. Not fun. Believe me, I, I, I can say it's happened more than once. So, uh, that's a thing too. All right. We are over time and, uh, well, we're at time exactly. Wow. I thought we would be over, but uh, I'll just ramble a little bit longer. Thank you guys so much. I, I want to say one more time, thank you so much for uh, letting me postpone mailbag today. Uh, I did that because I wanted to sleep in. Um, I slept in precisely 27 minutes past when my alarm would normally go off before I think it was Custard and um, I think it was Custard and Eddie got into like a little scuffle and I had to get up and come down here and see what was going on. 27 minutes is what I got out of that. Uh, they were good though. They were an excellent 27 minutes. And then, um, yeah, so good times. <laughs> uh, it wasn't just for that reason. Um, there's also, uh, DJs, uh, got me on this medication that makes me red and itchy, like really bad. It looks like I've, I've been sleeping in poison ivy for about an hour every morning. And I was trying to avoid having that happen right in the middle of mailbag. So I'm just sitting here like itching myself and trying to talk to you guys. 
Um, I know you'd understand, but it would be weird. It would be really weird. So that was another reason why I had to postpone it um, and uh, and miss that. So uh, thank you so much for understanding that. And uh, tomorrow we will do mailbag again. And I think we're going to aim for doing it just like we do it every Sunday that has a mailbag at 11 o'clock. So plan on 11. I'll put up a message or one of the admins will put up a message telling everybody tune in at 11 o'clock and I will make an effort to uh, move a little faster or whatever we have to do uh, to make sure that all of this gets um, properly looked at this weekend. All right. Till that is your own kid you just growled at. I think she's, she wants to hang out with me so much. Till is such a people cat. She is going to make someone so happy. She just meows constantly if she can't be right at your side. But if she can be at your side, when I let her into my office, as I, I try to do all day when I can, um, she comes in, she gets her attention, she gets her food, and then eventually she just wants to sit nearby. Like she finds a cat tree or something and sits there and just sits and sleeps and takes care of herself and is a perfect little quiet office companion. But if you get up... She's right on your heels, meowing at you to come back. <laughs> so uh, she's very cute that way. And she's been such a good mom to every kitten, too. Like, you see her correcting them and playing with them and stuff now as she's trying to teach them to be polite. But you also saw, uh, like, last night and, and the last week when Quid has been so sick, she has groomed him to the point where it looks like he got an actual bath in water. Like, she just... she has taken such good care of him and he has been a disaster so she's just a great mom you're such a good till i know you get a bad reputation because you're so growly and you want the kittens to respect you but that's good you should get that respect you're a good good mom she also tolerates anything as long as i'm paying attention to her yes she does she's a good one that way oh oh oh, okay Uh, i say that and then she's like don't flip me on my back right now All right, I won't then, because you complained. I can tell you're a little stressed. So speaking of that stress, I think I'm going to take her to her room for lunch or uh, maybe take her to my office. Uh, We've got to shuffle some cats at any rate, but uh, we're going to put this stuff away, clean up the room a little bit, shuffle some cats and the archive. Uh, It's funny, I say, and the archive. I I don't know if those are being uploaded yet. Um, I think that the, the... Uh, wonderful people that are helping out with that stuff are doing the micro uploads first and then coming back around to the mailbags. But I can tell you that the mailbags have gone into that system. Um, And so uh, making these archives now is uh, better than ever, knowing that they aren't just being spooled to disk. (laughs) Uh, The the disk equivalent of the Indiana Jones warehouse, I suppose. So, yep, good times. All right. Let's uh, turn off this microphone. Okay, okay, okay. I know now you are doubly stressed and you just want somebody to go hit, don't you? All right, uh, uh, where's my mic?
you, everybody. I'm, this is going to end the archive when I start a micro, but I have to do this. So thanks again, everybody. They were just being a little more snuggly, but they're still pretty tucked in there. Drizzle, that matches you real well, doesn't it? Looking very good. Microbill, microbial. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm put this stuff up. Uh, thanks again, everybody. Bye. I'm going to end this close-up. That's, that's the archive, so. Hey, Till. Oh, boy, these two don't get along. They've got history, do You just not give her the respect that she wants.